praise to the one who has a name that's above every name this morning his name is Jesus morning lift it up this morning your name is come on let the anointing fall holy, upon your life today your at the mention of that name that's it that's it at the mention of his name every knee must bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth every subject to the name of Jesus we bring all of our troubles all of our problems all of our struggles all of our battles and we say they must bow at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we bring all of our sickness all of our disease, all of our lack must bow at the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. All of our worry, all of our fear, all of our dread must bow at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. You're making us whole again, Jesus. You're making us new again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it. I don't want to stop just yet. We're preparing for something. Hallelujah. We're preparing for something. Come on, you got to get prepared for what God's about to do. He just shows up suddenly, but you got to be prepared for that moment. And the way you prepare is as we worship the Lord this morning. Come on, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Let him make you new again. Lord, we're here for your presence. We're going after you. We're going after you today. Hallelujah. 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 Come on with your own words. They're going to play it softly, but with your own words, just tell him, Lord, we're here for you today. We're here to come after you. We're here to lay down our burdens, but we're here to come after you. There is nothing you can't do. There is no problem that's too hard. There is no battle that you have not already won. There is no victory that we cannot live in. There is nothing that comes against us. There is no weapon that can prosper against us. 
who or what could come against us who or what could separate us from your love nothing there's no famine there's no nakedness there's no peril there's no struggle there's no battle but in all of these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us the one that gave himself for us and we stand in your presence upon your word worshiping you and living free <laughs> we choose this morning to believe so that we would live free because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And I'm in you, Lord, by faith. And you're in me. Therefore, you have set me free and I live free this morning. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We receive it today. Well, bless the name of the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, would you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team, for leading us. You can be seated this morning. I really feel to press into the Word this morning because God's about to show up in even greater ways than He already has. How many believe God's already shown up this morning? He's here. You might say, well, I haven't felt anything. I haven't seen really anything. I, 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 well, well you're, you're just missing out because he's here. You know, you can miss something that's right in front of you and right around you sometimes if you just don't open your eyes to it. But if you'll open up your eyes, he's here right now. And he stands ready to do something wonderful in your life. Take your Bibles and turn with me this morning to Romans chapter 10. We're in the third week of the What If series. Last week we were in Romans chapter 9. And I read to you in verse 22, it says, What if God, wanting to show His wrath, to make His power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath, prepared for destruction, we talked about. What if God is really God and we're not? Well, what would that look like? What would that happen what would happen what would it seem like and we looked at that last week but today we're going to be in Romans chapter number 10 and I'm going to begin reading at verse number 13 Romans chapter 10 verse 13 this what if series is a series for the skeptical for the struggling and for the searching we're, we're, we're this week and next week we'll conclude the what if series so if you're struggling if you're searching for something if you're skeptical, this is a series for you. And we want you to grab hold of this. Romans chapter number 10, verse number 13 is where I'm going to begin reading. And it says, for whoever, somebody say whoever. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay, simple question. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, but how can they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him um, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's not talking about a preacher don't don't look to a man you, you don't have to it, it's talking about a a message proclaimed a word proclaimed how how can they believe in him in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without the message being given to them and how shall they share the message or preach unless they are sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? 
So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? For Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not even a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation, or one that does not have the wisdom that you have or the understanding. Verse 20, but Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found, the Lord speaking here, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Now, I'm going to read one more verse in Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. And then Paul writes and says, for I also am an Israelite. I have believed in Jesus and I am saved, is what he's saying. So God has not cast away his people. So we're going to take this setting of scripture. And I want to talk to you about this question. What if the chaos is keeping you from obtaining? What if the chaos is keeping you from obtaining Christ? from obtaining the promises, from obtaining your blessing, from obtaining wisdom, from obtaining the things that God has declared to you? What if the problem that you're struggling with in obtaining is the chaos that is around you or within you? The scripture read to you, Paul is writing here, and, and he's, he's writing about Israel's rejection of Christ. They refuse to accept Jesus. The reason they refused to accept Jesus as the Messiah was because of their perception. They, they, they turned away. God had told them. That's what, that's what I read to you. God spoke to them through Moses. God spoke to them through Isaiah. God would tell them things were coming. There was going to be a, a foolish nation which would represent the Gentiles that, that God would pour out His Spirit on because they would receive. But Israel will reject the gospel. And that got me thinking as I was looking at that. What is it that caused them to not obtain Christ because it is the same thing that causes us to not obtain Christ or the promises of Christ. Now, I really believe that, that, that we're going to learn something today. That you're going to hear something that can change your life. What if we can obtain Christ, but chaos is our problem in obtaining? That was Israel's problem. Israel's problem was chaos. I'm going to show this to you. It was a chaos that was around them. Here's what it is, and, and I encourage you, if you have the ability, to take some notes today. I, I really do, because I, I believe some statements are going to be made that it's going to take you, uh, you're going to need to process. I'm talking about the chaos that gets in our way. What, what do you mean, Pastor? What, what it, well, as I read this, and I'll, I'll bring this out to you as we walk through this, but as I read this, there seems to be a chaos that takes place between what is said and what is heard. Between what is said by God and what is heard by Israel seems to not get through to them. And the reason for that is because of the chaos that's trying to keep them from hearing what God says. Let me, let me bring this out in another way. When God speaks, your flesh and the enemy does not want you to hear 
what God said. And so therefore, there is a, a chaos that begins to occur in our life between what God has said and what we really hear. Amen. And we're going to... We're going we're gonna to get through this, and, and, and you're, you're going to hear something that's going to make a difference in your life. He said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how will they call on the one who they have not believed? And how will they believe if they have not heard? And how will they not hear unless someone says it to them? So, but between somebody saying it and you hearing it is the battle to believe it. When, when God speaks, your flesh, your circumstances, your situation begins to try to interpret what God has just said. Amen. And we interpret it through our lenses. God says something. The message declares something, but we immediately, the chaos kicks in, and we try to process it through our understanding, through man's understanding, through man's wisdom. We process it through our past and through our backgrounds. We ask, well, is that really what I'm hearing because this is my circumstance? And so between God saying it, and us really hearing it, there is a chaos that occurs that determines whether we obtain it or not. This was Israel's problem. God told them Messiah was coming. Isaiah told them what he would look like, that he would have no form nor comeliness, that, that he would not come as this king that they were expecting. It was there prophetically, they knew, but between what they heard what they was said and what they heard with their understanding, chaos got in their way and it caused them to miss Christ. I want to submit to you that many Christians are lo losing in the battle between what is being said and what they are hearing. God says something, but we hear what Grandma said. God says something, but we hear what our favorite preacher said. God says something, but we hear what our circumstances are saying. God says something, but we want to go see what man says about it. Now, come on, oh, I'm going I'm to preach the daylights out of this if the Lord will help me. We, we, God says something, and then we filter it through our lens. Therefore, oftentimes, what we hear is not even what God said. God says, I'm your provider. God never said, six out of ten times I'll provide. But when we read, God said, I will provide, we put our circumstances in it. Well, that, that's all well and good. But I've been through times where there have been lack. Or I've known people that didn't have enough. Or I, and, and so therefore, we're not hearing what God said. We're hearing out of the chaos and confusion of what our flesh and our world and our enemy wants us to hear. Uh, faith comes. I said faith comes when you make a choice to hear what God said. Why do you think the enemy wants us to be biblically illiterate? Why do you think the enemy wants us to not read our word? Why do you think so many time reading their word? Because their flesh and the enemy of their soul has caused them to think, oh, you know enough already. No, you do not. You need to read this word with a fresh lens. You I mean, let me tell you who the hardest people are to get through with this message. Church people. You, I started to sound really mean there, and I, didn't, I caught myself. Us people. I started to say you people, but I'm one of you people. I, the, we've been raised in church. 
We've been raised under preachers. We've been raised under teachers. We've been, we've been, and, and therefore our whole, our whole gospel, our whole understanding, our whole grasp is what somebody else has told us about what God has said. And that's why we'll, we will claim till the sun comes up, till the sun goes down, that the Bible says cleanliness is next to godliness. Because grandma said that. I heard that all my life. Well, I don't care who said it. It's not in the Word. Well, hello? Are y'all, are y'all still with me? I, I don't... Wait, wait, whoa. I just... I, Hey, take a deep breath. That wasn't my sermon notes. <laughs> Y'all would have been in big trouble if that was my sermon notes. Because I'd have been all over the place. You might say you are anyway. <laughs> we, we, we will fight to the death in churches over things that we've heard God say that God never said. No, you're not, you're, you don't want me to go very far down that road. We will fight over our traditions. We will fight over our, that are not the word. They came from a time that we saw God do something, and so we equated it with God. What, what's the problem there? We equated it with God. God is God all by himself. And the problem is, God speaks, but instead of hearing what God said, what the Word declares, instead of hearing that, we are allowing the chaos and everything else that's going on around us, we're hearing that, and we're not hearing God plainly, and therefore, we are not obtaining. How else can you explain how Pharisees, Sadducees, we look down on them today, but they were the religious. They were the guardians of the law. They knew God's law frontwards and backwards. They were the leaders. They were the spiritual. They were the ones you turned to. But they were the very ones that missed Jesus. Because even though they knew, Ed, they heard it through their lens. Oh, come on now. What if the reason you're not obtaining the life the Lord has promised you is because you're hearing out of the chaos rather than by faith? What if you're hearing the clutter and the noise rather than faith? Here's the picture I get in my mind. Wait, God says something, and we've got all this chaos. We've got our thoughts and man's thoughts and our favorite preacher's thoughts and our family's thoughts and those that hate God's thoughts and, and, and those that are educated. And we've got our circumstances and we've got our past and, we, and we've got our families and we've got our struggles and we've got our battles. And all of this is going on up here. And God has said something. And what God has said is trying to make it through into our life. But we've got all this clutter going on. What do we do? You have to choose to believe what God said. Faith is choosing to believe what God said even if you don't see it. Is it not? For we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Faith is the evidence, substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of what's not yet seen. You have to believe what God said and, and forget the chaos. Therefore, if I'm struggling, if I've got a need, the Word says, my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. And I have to put away all the chaos, all the clutter, and I have to reach up through all that other stuff, and I have to wrap my hand in faith around that promise and live in that and say, I believe what was said. 
I'm between saying and hearing. But then there's another chaos moment. And that chaos moment is between hearing and saying. There's a chaos moment between what was said and what is heard. And then there's another chaos moment between what is heard and what is said. If, Lord, you're going to have to help me with this. Because we are to say what we believe. Isn't that what the Bible teaches us? If we believe something, we're supposed to say that. It doesn't ask for your opinion. It doesn't ask for you to focus on all the negatives or all the what ifs or all the possibilities that could be or all the other things. And that's not what I say. If you believe it, you speak it. If you believe what you say when you pray, you can have whatsoever things you ask. But the problem is, some of us have filtered through the chaos of what God has said, and we've grabbed that by faith, and we've heard it, and by faith it's in our heart. But then the chaos between what we've heard and believed and what we say keeps us from obtaining. Because we believe it, but we won't say it. We believe it, but it's too radical to say it. How are you today? Well, I can't say I'm blessed. Well, do you believe you're blessed? Well, but, but I'm struggling here, and my circumstances are here, and my finances are here. And I, Well, you, you're giving in to the chaos, and you'll not obtain. Here, let me, let me take you back to Israel. There were some of them, even in the Pharisees and leaders, who believed Jesus possibly was the Messiah. But they could not say it. Nicodemus had to come to him at night. Had to sneak in. Others had to be closet Christians. And they never lived in obtaining Christ. We've got too many Christians. We've got too many Christians who never obtained the promises of Christ. They believe what God said, but they won't say it. Can I tell you, I stand before you today, and it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with how good I am or how great I can perform or anything. But I can stand today and I can tell you something that I believe, that I've heard God say, that God said, and even though there's chaos all around it and it doesn't make sense when I look at myself, I heard him say it, and I reached up and grabbed it by faith, and I heard that and I believe it, and I'm about to declare it. Are you ready? The Bible says you're looking at someone who is the righteousness of God in Christ. You're looking at one. You don't think you're good enough, but you're looking at one. And it has nothing to do with if I'm good enough or not. It has to do with who Christ is. And what Christ did in me. And what I can believe. And what I can speak out by faith. And I don't deserve it any more than you do. But God said it. And I'm taking what God said at face value. I'm cutting through the chaos. It's in my heart. And I'm going to speak. Because out of the abundance of the heart, this mouth speaks. I am with him today. Ah. Amen. Amen. I am, you're looking at someone that is an overcomer. Anybody with me? Come on, if you're an overcomer today, raise your hand. Let me tell you, the hardest time you're going to have raising your hand is saying you're an overcomer when it feels like you're defeated right now. But the greatest thing you could ever do is in the moment that you feel the most defeated is to reach up your hand through the chaos and grab hold of that scripture and say, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what others have said. I don't care what the bills say. I don't care what my track record says. I'm reaching up through the chaos. I'm grabbing by faith and I've pulled it into my heart and I am an overcomer today. 
I can do all things through Christ. He didn't say some, Ed. Well, pastor, I think there's a lot of things you can't do. Not through Christ. I'm with her. Amen. She just put about three-quarter of y'all to shame. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I, I can walk. I mean, when, when I have no strength, those that are weak can say, I am strong. When I'm down and out, I can take off the garment, the spirit of heaviness, and I can put on the garment of praise because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, don't live in the chaos. Uh, don't let the chaos determine your position. The chaos is between the voice and the ears. It's between the saying and the hearing and the hearing and the saying. But if you get the chaos out, you will begin to do what the, the chaos leads to you rejecting or not obtaining. There is a chaos between what God said, what we heard, and what we've heard and what we said. There is a chaos between, and it is the chaos of overanalyzing. Uh, come on now. We have overanalyzed the promises of God to death. Let me tell you something about God. I'm going to save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache and, and a lot of things that you can just flat out avoid. Let me tell you something. You ready? Now, now you're going to have to hear it by faith. But I can make your life easier. You will never figure God out. You won't do it. You can try from now till you die. You ain't gonna do it. And you're not gonna. It's not. You're not gonna figure out him. He said, "My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts." But we overanalyze everything. We take the promises of God. Well, I wonder what about this. Well, I wonder what about that. Well, I wonder, I wonder if if this is really for me or was this just for somebody else? You can overanalyze yourself right out of obtaining. The chaos between is man's thoughts, your past, your background, your circumstances, the enemy's words. There is a chaos between, but you can choose to believe what you've heard God say. You've got to choose faith over chaos. The Lord says, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> let me give you an instance of someone, and I'm, I'm not going to hold you much longer, but let me give you an instance of someone who understood how to get through the chaos. He is nobody's favorite character in the Bible. If you ask who favorite characters are, no one will choose this person. If you ask who was the, who was the most overcoming person in the Bible, no one will choose this person. His name was Job. Some of y'all thought that was Job. You didn't want to read it because you're tired of your job. It was Job. Amen. But Job, he lost everything. I mean everything. He lost family, houses, land, possessions, money. He lost his health. He lost everything, and he found himself a man of wealth, a man of influence, found himself with no wealth, no influence, sitting on the ash heap of his life, had boils all over his body that he was taking broken parts of pottery and scraping boils off his life. I mean, is he your favorite character? Huh. Here he is sitting there. So bad was his life that his own wife, you, you can take things from a lot of people, but his own wife comes to this man and says to him, Job, why don't you curse God and die? You think you got it bad. And his own wife comes to him and says, when are you going to just end this? Just curse God and let him kill you. Good grief, I'm tired of looking at you. <laughs> it just, just, and Job was able to say in Job chapter 19 and verse 25, 
But I know. That's getting through the chaos. He had heard God speak something and he let it sink into his heart and he got through the chaos and he and he got it and he heard it and he believed it. And he said, for I know. And then he spoke. How many know between I know my Redeemer lives? How many know between those words, the chaos must have been raging in his life? Telling him, how can you say that? Look at what's happened to you. His own free must be so sinful to have all this going on. But Job would stand up and he would say, I know my Redeemer lives. And he'll stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know. In my flesh I will see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. That's someone that made it through the chaos and obtained it. And the end result of Job, we can argue and say, yeah, but he lost all that. Yeah, but the end result was he received a double portion on this world, and then he received eternity because he believed and he spoke and he got through the chaos. What chaos is keeping you from obtaining? What, what chaos has gotten between what God has said and what you've heard? Or what you've heard and believed and what you'll say? You know what chaos is? Chaos is an absence of peace. And you know what the scripture says about Jesus? Isaiah 9 and 6 says it. He is the prince of peace. John 14 says, my peace I give to you. I'm leaving you my peace. The Bible says there is a peace that can pass all understanding. And his name is Jesus. See, we allow the chaos to keep us from obtaining. And chaos is an absence of peace. But Jesus, who is peace, Produces and brings to us rest. And we obtain it when we rest in peace. I'm not going to take the time to go all over this. I always come with more message than I have time. Jesus is peace. The problem is chaos. And you receive Jesus how? How do we receive Christ? faith so that means faith reaches through the chaos and Jesus is peace and the peace that he gives us leads us to obtain the promise here's what about Christ that we need to understand here's how you how you obtain for by grace You have been saved through faith. That's how you obtain it. You cut through the chaos and you realize, but it's grace. And by faith you reach up, and through faith you reach up and you grab the promise. And you pull it into your heart. And you believe. And you speak. And peace comes into your life. And peace produces rest. And you cease from your labors. How many know when you're fighting chaos, it's laborsome. It's, I mean, you, it'll wear you out. The Bible says Daniel prophesied of our day, the end days. And he said the spirit of Antichrist, you know what he's going to do? He's going to try to wear out the saints with his many words. He's going to produce as much chaos as he can through the spirit of Antichrist to cause people to quit believing. Because when you believe, you receive peace. And when you receive peace, you rest. And when you rest, you obtain. And you win. I'm inviting you today out of your chaos into the peace of Christ to the rest that he provides so you can obtain all that he's promised.
but it's going to fail. Hebrews 4 and 10 talks about the rest that we can have in Christ. Do you know we are seated with Him in heavenly places? Stand your feet. You are seated with Him in heavenly places. You might say, well, my feet are right here on the ground. He's your Lord. It's in your home. And you're in Him. And in Him are those places where you'll find rest and victory. And power. If you're tired of the chaos. If you're tired of the overanalyzing. If you're tired of trying to figure it all out on your own. Do you know that's a, that's a rat race that you'll never get out of? Do you know scientists will take a specimen, a rat, or whatever they want to take, and they'll sometimes will put it in, and they'll give it tasks that it can't accomplish to see how it will continue to respond. They'll put things just out of reach to see if it'll keep trying. They'll put it on a wheel just to see how long it'll keep rolling. Do you know that's what the enemy has done to some of you? He's put you in a state of chaos all around you. And he's trying to tell you there are things that are out of your reach. And he wants you to just keep trying to analyze it and figure it out and find a way through. And, and you're, you're just nothing more than a test study to him. See how many traps he can cause you to run into. How many dead ends he can cause you to keep hitting. Because you won't believe Christ. You keep trying to find all this other stuff. He just keeps laying it out there. Just dangles another carrot. I don't know any, I don't, I've never been to one. I've seen them on TV a few times, but I, the, the dog races, I don't even know if they still have them. I guess they do. Greyhounds. You put them out there. And all I've ever seen is they have a, is a rabbit that they chase, and it's usually just on a pole, and it's going around the track. And every time the gate opens, they chase it. Some of you, the enemy in your past and your circumstances and all the chaos in your life just opens another gate and you start chasing it. And you never obtain. You chase ways to escape your problems. And you never obtain the escape. You obtain some addiction. He sets before you other doors. And he says, oh, I bet the answer's behind that door. So you go through that door. And it leads you farther away from Christ. And you never obtain what you're after. But you just keep going through doors that the enemy has set up for you. And you never obtain. Today, I can offer you by faith the ability to obtain and have peace. I, I want somebody to hear me today. I have peace because of Christ. I can rest because of Him. If it wasn't for Him, I'd have no peace. Bow your heads with me. Father, help us today. There's a chaos. But we don't have to keep living in the chaos. We can reach through it and hear.
hear what you say and believe and reach through the chaos that seems to be against us in our, even in our own life and speak what we believe and we can obtain Christ his promises his life his rest heads are bowed eyes are closed if you're ready to be finished with the weariness chaos the rat race and running through every door and your mind just can't taking you farther and farther away and you're ready for some peace and to rest in Christ by faith you're ready to hear what he said and believe it and speak it and live in it and you're ready to lay down all the other stuff that man said that you've thought that families told you that whatever today's your day if that's you today here's what I'm going to ask you to do I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because today I feel a little bit different I could ask you to raise your hand and you would maybe raise your hand and then the chaos would kick in. That doesn't mean if you don't do what I'm about to tell you that you can't have peace, but this is the way the Lord's leading you today. If you're here and you're ready to get rid of the chaos and you're ready by faith to come to Christ for his peace and his rest, I want you to step out of your seat and walk right down here to the front of this church so we can just pray together.